Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, we are breaking down this month's buddy read title, The Replacement Wife by Darby Kane. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored in part by Amazon Music. Check it out. It has 70 million songs, thousands of playlists. You can listen without commercials. Sign up today and get your first month for free using the Shelf Addiction link. Go to getamazonmusic.com forward slash shelf addiction and sign up today. Again, the code is shelf addiction. The link is also in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this month's Buddy Read discussion featured here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, every week we get bookish with book discussions, book reviews, shelf bites, and more. If you're wondering what is a Buddy Read, this is a feature where Classy and I select a thriller or mystery title that we both are interested in. Then we have a candid conversation about that book or audiobook. We even discuss it in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, joining a live chat. So grab a glass of wine, a cocktail, a cup of tea or coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, and settle in for this fun discussion. As always with book chats, there is a spoiler alert in effect, so you've been warned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with your book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing it. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, please consider doing that by supporting our sponsors. By supporting them, you are supporting us. Check out all of the sponsors at shelfaddiction.com forward slash sponsors. If you've read the book or listened to the audiobook and would like to weigh in on this conversation, be sure to join the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on this discussion. Links for everything I've mentioned are in the show notes, so let's get going. We've got a lot to cover today, so we are going to jump right on in. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green from The Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Hi, Tamara. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Yes. Same to you. Same to you. I'm like feeling really good about this year still. I know. Okay, so when we're recording this, we're a few days into the new year, and I'm still feeling pretty good. How about you? I am. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. Uh, 2021 ended weird. That's probably the best way I can say it. So, you know, it's like you want to just look up, and that's my attitude right now. So, so far, I'm looking up. Yeah, I was telling Casey the other day um, that it would not take much for my 22 to be better than 21. My 21 kind of sucked, to be honest. Right. The bar much. is not, it's like, right? The bar. <laughs> it won't All take I need much. is just a little bit. <laughs> right. Just a little. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I'm feeling good about that. Although, I'm feeling good right now, y'all, but you couldn't tell because I sound a little hoarse. I'm not sick. I don't know what's happening. The Midwest weather hates me or something. So sorry about that. There's nothing I could do about it. I woke up like, oh, my God, what happened to my voice? Just scratchy. <laughs> Went to sleep normal. Woke up like this. <laughs> I woke up like this. Like this. <laughs> yeah. But at least, you're, like you say, you're not feeling bad. It's just the little scratchy throat. So, yeah, run the humidifier. I, uh, I, I know mine does that, too, when the weather changes and I have to turn on the heat and then it gets dry. And so. Yes, and yeah, lots of water. <laughs> yeah, I have water right here. And then I have bourbon right here. Oh, yeah. That should clear and up something. then I will use the humidifier tonight. And I'll put it on uh, full blast right next to the bed. <laughs> so that's the plan. Nice. You should sound better about normal. tomorrow. A little bourbon, yes. humidifier, and water. Woo. Yeah. It's the great greatest combo, right? Hey, Betty White says she liked vodka. And she, you know, she lived like 99, right? I know. She so. also said she avoided anything green, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> right, because I think she said her favorite foods was like hot dogs and french fries. I was like, yeah. 
girl, not the hot dogs and french fries. <laughs> Uh-huh. But hey, you know what? She got the had the longevity to, you know, support that, I guess. So, yes. Right. Uh-huh. I don't know if I could do it, though. My, I was going to say it would be like, B, what you eat every day? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm-mm. You're like, mm-mm. You're trying to murder for me? you. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt after, um, you know, my little bit with family bringing us food. And I was just like, I can't do it. I can't I can't do another meal of somebody else cooking. Uh, let me break out the green smoothies and detox oh and start God. all over. Clean the system out, all the butter and all that other crap people put in yep. everything. Yep. And, and fried. It's delicious sometimes, but, you know, it'd be delicious. But you can't eat that every day. No. And that's what it was becoming. And I was like, OK, I got to stop. Just, you start stop. to feel it. You start to feel bad. Like, oh, what's happening? Right. It was like, is something clogged? <laughs> I think right. that's an artery. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but it did. It just felt like, okay, time out. Yeah. Oh. No. Yeah. Eat a salad. <sighs> Eat a salad, chick. Eat a salad. <laughs> Your stomach said so. <laughs> it really did. So sorry to go off on a tangent, guys. No, but... it's fine. We're good. This is our new banter for the new year. We might get in the stuff before we start the book. We'll see how, we'll feel it out. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right. So I guess we might as well get into the meat of things because, you know, we have a pretty interesting conversation ahead. I feel it in my bones. I do too. Yeah. I do too. Um, yeah, I do. Let me write. I just thought of something. While, to um, write down. Yes. <laughs> okay. I did. Okay. So sorry if you well, hear paper rustling, but yeah. All right. Okay. So you guys, before we start the conversation, uh, there is an after show for today's episode. And if you're curious about that and you want to watch it, then you can head on over to Patreon and it's available now. So we're just having a good time in the after show and we know you want to check it out. So today we are discussing the book, The Replacement Wife by Darby Kane. We've listened to the um, aerial book. What? <laughs> we listened to the audio book narrated by Carissa Vacker. First published December 28th, 2021 by William Morrow Paperbacks and Harper Audio. The paperback came in at 416 pages and the unabridged audio comes in at 10 hours and 13 minutes. Classy, would you kindly share the synopsis? Certainly. Elisa Wright is a mom and wife living a nice, quiet life in a nice, quiet town. She's also convinced her brother-in-law is a murderer. Josh has one dead wife and one missing fiancé, and though he grieved for them, he starts dating someone new. Elisa fears for that woman's safety, and she desperately wants to know what happened to her friend, Josh's missing fiancé. Searching for clues means investigating her own family, and she doesn't like what she finds. A laptop filled with incriminating information and other women. But when Alyssa becomes friends with Josh's new girlfriend and starts to question things she thinks are true, Alyssa wonders if the memories of a horrible incident a year ago have finally pushed her over the edge and Josh is really innocent. With so much at stake, Alyssa fights off panic attacks and a strange illness. Is it a breakdown or something more? The race is on to get the truth before another disappearance because there's a killer in the family. Or is there? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God. Or is there? Oh, okay. And that darn name is like in the book they kept saying Lisa, Alisa, Alyssa. Yes. And I'm I'm reading and I'm like, that's I'm like, what is it? Is it Alyssa? Is it Alicia? I, yeah. So sorry. I feel like it's a Elisa, I think, but sometimes right. it was said different ways. Right. And when I'm reading it, I'm like hearing Carissa, the narrator, say it. And I'm like, but when I'm looking at it, my brain doesn't want to read. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that brain reading connection. And I'm like, but it says Elisa. Ali-. So, <laughs> well, because I think even I her mean, husband calls her like Lisa. I think he shortened it a few times. Yeah, it's Elisa. weird. I don't like that. And I feel like I heard the husband's name 
said said two different ways a couple of yes, times. Yes, because was I it Harris she... or Harrison? Yes. I'm like, okay. wait, what is his name? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Because I'm like, yes, is his name Harrison and you guys are calling him Harris? Is her name Elisa and you guys are calling, you know, are you shortening it and why? Yeah. Especially with reading and audio, just, okay, can I go on a quick tangent? Yes. That is one of the things that I do hate about books, especially when it comes to names. Like, don't name your characters with names that are very similar. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mike and Ike. Do not do a Mike and Ike or a (laughs) Pat and and Matt. Don't do that because you really throw us readers off. And, you know, like with this, with Alyssa and Harris, is it Harrison? Is it, don't shorten their names in the book. Just give them a simple name. (laughs) Or even if it's a difficult name, stick to it. But don't make rhyme, but do not give them rhymey names. Or, yeah, no. Right. Because then I get the characters mixed up. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. I think that the narrator had issues with the names. The author probably should have used some different names. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, probably when she was writing it, she probably just thought, oh, these are, it's a little different. But, you know, and she never thought when it comes to narration. Well, maybe she'll know now. Hopefully. I know. I mean, and that makes me wonder, like, how much editing are they doing? Because I know for sure, I'm like, and that's why I'm glad you said, you know, you kind of uh, co-signed on the husband's name because I could have swore she said Harrison several times mm-hmm. and I'm reading the synopsis. I'm like, wait, is it Harris? I, I thought. The husband's <laughs> name is not even in the synopsis. No. Josh's name is in there, but yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Probably if we looked it up on, you know, someone's well, I mean, review the reviews, page. I was reading reviews and everyone oh, were was you? talking of Harris. Yeah. Oh, Every okay. review I read called him Harris. And I'm like, well, I'm assuming a lot of these people read it. Yeah. So. So maybe it is. So it was something with the narrator then. I don't know. Because that, you know, but that, right. Because I see Harris too, her brother, Josh's older brother, Harris. Because when you say hair, like Harris is, you know, that's kind of hard. Mm-hmm. Like to, to give it a, pose- um, for him to have some kind of possession like Harris is. Mm-hmm shoes so it probably would sound like harrison's i mean honestly she could have just called that husband asshole the whole time and i would have been okay with it (laughs) Uh, yeah dick wide anything asshole did that (laughs) Mm -hmm. yep mister yeah yeah (laughs) because i'm like ugh. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I was like, I was not invested in any of these characters. I gave two fucks. I mean, sorry. I gave Girl, no dams. <laughs> I know, but I'm just like, we started off, just starting off. I gave no dams about nobody. <laughs> when something had happened, I was like, oh, well. She I, I didn't. I, to give. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Um, Tamara, I had no feelings for anybody. I didn't yeah. feel sorry for anybody. Um, you know, okay. <clears throat> except for Elisa and you know her PTSD but then she started doing some really stupid nosy crap and I was just like yeah. so, I, I didn't want to say it. I was like that's what you get but but I was like okay but she's suffering so this is okay y'all so this ties into one of the reasons I did not one of the things I didn't like is that Darby Kane decided to go with the ever annoying um unreliable narrator trope right so that's like the easiest go-to just make her confused and we didn't find out till a little bit in why she was so traumatized and that made me feel a little bit less annoyed about it because she experienced anxiety paranoia she was gaslit constantly she was taking drugs right for anxiety right and and ptsd right and ptsd and of course i think naturally she was a people pleaser anyway based on how she would talk about kind of like shoving her own 
say so down mm-hmm. <laughs> to appease her family. Right. So initially I was really, really annoyed by her. I'm like, okay, the first very beginning of the story, she sounded like she knew what she was talking about. She's like, my friend is gone. And what the hell happened to her? Right. I preferred her in that state. And then she changed into this driveling, like one minute she's upset, whining, yeah. whining, um, manic, almost like, oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, 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 you're not going to do this to me. And I'm like, are you saying this shit out loud or in your head? Because you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> True. You don't know. Yeah, it was like that. Yeah, it was very annoying. Like her whole persona was annoying to me. And I wish it weren't. No. Yeah, I I, I liked her at the beginning as well, because, you know, she was like, I'm going to stand up. He's going to tell me he's going to um, he's not getting away with this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, I think he's a murderer. You know, at first, I was drawn in with those first couple of pages of, you know, uh, how she described Josh. You know, I like him, but I'm kind of weary. And I was like, okay, what's going on? And, you know, and then it it was introduced why she thought he was a murderer. Because her girlfriend, because Josh, her brother-in-law, is dating the main character, Alyssa's friend. And the friend is missing. Um, So, um, but then it kind of, it got really boring after that or I would say annoying but it, it just kind of it just kind of like went down a lot yeah. it slowed down for me about like the 30 percent of it is slowed down like interesting interesting hit the brakes yep yeah <laughs> and you know and and I'm I'm beginning to enjoy a slow a slow burn if you do it properly um because before you know i i was the main oh god it's taking so long what's what are they doing blah 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 but if you do it properly and i and you know we've we've ran across a few and i would even say her last book darby kane's last book you know it was she had some little slow burn moments but she had some zingers in there this had no zingers there was nothing exciting there was nothing that brought um, me to the point where I was just like, Ooh, what's going to happen next? It just, I felt like she was just telling me a, a damn story, like blah, 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 and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I was just like, and I found not, I agree with you with that. Yes. It was like, she was telling a bland story, but I think part of that reason is because Elisa was like this perpetual, like regurgitating character, constantly questioning her own sanity, mm. constantly saying, am I crazy? That shit gets annoying. Yeah, It gets repetitive now. Okay. I understand like in some books, if you're taking drugs, you know, things can be distorted, but I feel like there's a certain way to write it so that mm-hmm. the character actually is in distress without putting the reader in distress as well. <laughs> Because <laughs> that is the perfect. Um, you said it perfectly because that was a distress. It, I it, feel it like, did, what is yeah. happening to this woman? Like, come, sit your ass down somewhere. I mean, if I were in the book, I would have grabbed her by her sh- arm and said, sit your ass down, <laughs> get your life together, think about what you want to say, then say it. <laughs> like, and I know, and, and, but but I also <laughs> felt guilty because I'm like, but she suffers from, you know, I this know. condition. And like you were saying, that is probably why Darby wrote this character like that. But it got to the point where it is this all her anxiety or her people please well it was a lot of people pleasing because it got to a point where it's like okay for one you can solve some of this you can stop some of this take the damn key from your brother and tell your husband no she kept too many secrets like for someone who's so confused and not sure of things, why would you keep so many secrets? You just have to explain them later, yeah. especially when you realize that your brother-in-law is straight lying on you. Right. The or you feel like you're realize, in danger. 
Yep. Right. The moment you realize, wait, he just told a bald faced lie. Yep. I'm taking my chances. Yep. Right. Yeah. I would take my chances. Um, either my husband's going to believe me or not. And if he doesn't do that, yes, but right. She just kept saying, Oh no, he'll take his side. Why won't he take my side? And I'll be like, Mm-mm. for Deuces. one, I didn't. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, you know what? Last time I checked, you sleep with your brother. Is your brother? Bet your brother ABC don't have these for you. <laughs> Bet your brother don't have these brown thighs over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Okay, so you better get on my page or get the fuck out because right. I'm like, what is this? What is this? Yeah, that it was. You know, like, for you question, you question uh, my sanity. Then you, you know, your brother's talking about taking my son and all those threats. I was like, I know. is that a threat? But, you know, again, that's me. Not, I, 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 I'm not the character, but I'm like, but Mama Bear, you threatened to take my son? Oh, right. hell breaks loose. That's, I know. That's flesh of my flesh? Fuck you in Harris. Right. <laughs> that would have like, been my fuck for Things y'all. that were happening were clearly unexplainable in some ways, but the fact that she instantly took blame or took responsibility for things that were not hers to take really annoyed me. Like with the pills, she knew she hadn't left them down there. She, they have a routine. It's like on autopilot. She knew. Yeah. And she it's- also kept saying, why do people keep walking up in this house? Like they just, <laughs> they- See, no, that, that so- drove me bananas. I'm like, first off, you know, people just walking in your house any old time of the day they please. But th- yeah, no one could have moved this pill bottle. But you, I'd be like, you better check your dumb ass brother for coming in here. He may have moved it. And his girlfriend. And his, and his crazy girlfriend, who is also turning off and on like a damn light switch every other. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And she's, other a, and she's roaming through the house. <laughs> Right. The, the, right. The girlfriend had an extra set of keys because, you know, Josh gave them to her. So yep. come on now. But yeah, it it, it was it, it became frustrating. Um, like, I can't believe you're allowing them to do this to you. I thought you were a stronger character than this, because like, for example, when I walked in and if Rachel was in my husband's office looking through his bag, I would call my husband immediately. Get in here right now. Right. They're in here right now. Because they, they <laughs> twisted that story right. on her within seconds, even though she tried to stand up for herself. Because I was like, oh, good. And she's like, no, why are you in, in his back? She kept going back. And I was like, yes, you know, she's getting some kahunas. Yes, she's getting stronger. And all of a sudden they flipped it on her again. And I'm like, God, damn. The minute. OK, so this is another thing that annoyed with me with Elisa. With the whole okay, it started with the storage container thing. When you went with Rachel, you got back and you knew Rachel was gonna rat y'all out, you know, because she oh, she tried to be nice about it, but it was like nice, nasty. Okay, <laughs> the way she went on about that, I instantly thought they were in cahoots. Instantly, I'm like, they working together to gaslight you. Why are you so stupid? Yeah. Like they work it together. It was very clear early on that they were working together to gaslight her. Right. Because why would you, new girlfriend, want to go to a storage locker with me? Why? Right. I can't remember if she told her what she was going there for, but why all of a sudden you're so interested in going somewhere with me? Why would a new girlfriend knew what you know there was always question about how long they had actually been together a new girlfriend who you know likes loves josh or whatever but l- let me help you because i believe something happened to your friend why would she be doing that what's her motivation yeah yeah that's what i thought too like hmm, you're not real bright here no, or you know no. something some your character something is up with your 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 character flaw, I mean, your flaw, but uh, apparently, again, like you said, unreliable narrator. But this became just too much. And maybe it's because I was just thinking of Darby's first book, you know? I know. And her main character was so opposite of this, polar and opposite. 
She was in control. She was even killed. You couldn't, I mean, you shook her, but she she was was like, yes, (laughs) even when she was rattled, she wasn't going to show it on the outside. No, she recovered. And I was like, okay, I did. Cause I was like, okay, Darby's going to using again, the, the family dynamics with the two brothers who are tight and, and using that against the wife, you know, again, kind of like this. Cause I was like, oh, okay. Is that what she's doing here? Because at one point I was like, even Harris, hmm, is he in on this? Because, you know, he was not believing anything that yeah. the wife said. And, and and that's where I thought she was going with this. But then when that reliable, unreliable character, because even with um, the perfect wife or the pretty little wife, whichever one it was the, her first book, it was a little, you know, at one point she became unreliable because she wasn't sure, like, did I kill him? Did I not? But she recovered. I mean, she, she's she like, questioned mm. herself, but she wasn't confused. She no. was like, okay, I did this action. He should have been dead, but maybe I left him and he wasn't. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It wasn't like, what's going on? What day is it? What time is it? <laughs> like this woman, she's yeah. so confused about everything. She's yeah. questioning conversations she's had. And I'm like, yeah. If some, and now I have, thankfully I have never been in a situation where someone tried to gaslight me on a regular fucking basis, right. but I'd like to think that I would stand up for myself and not allow that and stop questioning myself i'm like okay she even used the word gaslighting in the book yeah she said stop you're you're trying to gaslight me she even said that to him and she still backed down she still was out (laughs) yes she did she did several times yeah like you know what he's doing and you didn't start to like even halfway get your life together until a private detective had to pat you on the back and tell you it's okay it's not you it's yeah. them so someone else had to tell her she wasn't nuts right. for her to believe she wasn't nuts which is crazy that was too easy to she's too easy to manipulate yeah i mean to say the least yeah. because and I, yeah and i and i'm yeah i get that she used the PTSD and the, the trauma as her is her scapegoat for the unreliable um, narrator trope, but it, it just became too much. Um, and before she did begin to, to get a backbone, it, we were like 70, probably 80, if not 83% before, you know, this woman really began to stand up for herself when she had so much evidence and she still she, wimped out. She still yeah. wimped out. Yeah. Because let me tell you, there were so many times when she had private conversations that she could have recorded those conversations. I'm just saying. There were so many times, like, and especially at the end. Yeah, I thought okay, that too. Y'all. And I was like, is she, is she just like, right. not right. maybe she didn't want to like date the book or I didn't know. Cause I mm. thought the same thing. And I was like, okay, so why didn't she go there? Like, you have a cell phone the cell phone is being used for all these other things (laughs) but no recording no um you know she took pictures she sent text message yeah it's a mess and then and i don't want to we're not going to reveal the ending right now but i do want to say at the end there was an opportunity for somebody to get theirs and she protected them i'm like you's a dumb one you a dumb one I'd be like, go ahead, slice his ass up. Do what you want. I'm not jumping in front of that. Girl, I cannot with that character. I'm like, I don't understand the logic Mm-mm. of this. And I just got sliced. <laughs> Hell to the gnaw. I, I mean, like to the bone, her arm about to fall off. I'm like, I don't Not just understand. that, it was the arm where she got shot. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I don't understand why you would protect someone who has been effing with you for weeks yeah <laughs> and then his and then that. his look yeah then his look con- the f- confession and mm, oh right and that was the thing <laughs> you heard the confession and yeah. you still mm-hmm. wanted to save him right. and what did it gain you in the end nothing and you only got the confession because you were like 
okay i'm just gonna say i'm just gonna say what happened you know please do <laughs> she cried on the floor begging to give just tell the truth <laughs> and they're gonna tell her okay um what was the girl's name rachel he he told you the truth he did what you wanted now let him go are you crazy that girl's whole goal was to make his life miserable right. he gave you what you wanted now let him go but she was like thank you very much i just wanted to hear you say it basically and you still want to protect him yes granted he is the the, um your uncle the uncle of your child the brother of your husband but he's a jackass dude i don't care and he proved how much he was a jackass even in the end of the story i know and i was just like see you did he still tried to lie and the one thing she did the one thing that elisa did that gave her credibility back was at the very end where she said, you know what, what you going to do about your brother? And she was like, finally, she said, okay, look, it's him or me. If you dare try to defend him, you out finally. Mm -hmm. And that should have been said. I don't know what, how long did this book take place? Two weeks, wait, um, a couple couple months, a couple couple weeks. Maybe a month or so, because I think Rachel, they said they had only been dating maybe a month, whatever. Yeah. But for a month, it was a little bit of a time gap when they were gone. They ran off and got married. They were gone yeah. for like a week or so. Yeah. But when that I stuff mean, was happening at home with them. Yeah. That no. I mean, the woman's. Yeah, it was it was just a lot. It was a so lot. Like- <laughs> and it wasn't good to me. It, it, okay so you guys there's more i want to talk about we got more to say but i think this is a good time for a break Take a break listen to these commercials check out these sponsors you want to check out my book review journal it's amazeballs i love it it's the new year i know you're starting new book challenges check out the reading journal challenge uh tracker as well i would really love you for doing it check it out it's on amazon right now we'll be right back Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, and we're back, you guys. So I also want to talk about this other random character, who no. is apparently <laughs> um, Josh's ex-girlfriend who was also, he was cheating on Elisa's friend with this other woman. And then this other woman thought she would be the main woman, but instead she was dumped. So she spent this whole book chasing Josh around and his brother around and her around, like snooping, like just trying to be yeah, obnoxious. <laughs> So she does this. And of course, she notices the redhead popping up here and here, here and there. So what she goes to pick up her son one day and she's already got a couple things loose in her head at this point. She's kind of off her game. She sees the woman at the school. She she rams her car in front of her to stop her from leaving, gets out, approaches the car, starts saying, who are you? What are you doing? Get out. I mean, it's this whole scene. Yeah. I've seen you everywhere. I've seen, yes. This whole scene, she take a couple unsolicited photos of the woman, like, and people are like, what is she doing? And it's bad enough people going to talk. But then, so that one scene, I'm like, this kind of seemed like off the rails. I'm not sure I would have done that for all those people. No. But to each her own. But then, I really couldn't stand her little traitor son at that point. They get home and her son. Girl, you know kids are snitches. Her son blow her shit up. Dad, blah, blah, blah. Mom did this. I'm like, oh my God, you gonna rat her out like that? You dirty, dirty little brat. Like, what is wrong with you? You gonna rat her out like that? Damn. Man, he couldn't wait. (laughs) He couldn't wait. I'd have been like, look. (laughs) Sit your ass in the car. I'll come get you. As soon as we pulled up to the house, don't you dare move. I'm going in first. 
You stay you here. Do. Yes. <laughs> Cause you know, you know your child. You know who's a snitch. You know who got the big. (laughs) I'm gonna go in the house. I want you to sit in that car until I get back. Do not move. Cause I gotta tell daddy something. But yeah, it was it. A lot of this story was just like some of some of the things that happened were just unbelievable to the point where I was just like. I, I was like, Ugh. like you were saying, I don't think that would happen, no. but I'm not sure about, you know, and that, that pickup line. I don't know. I have heard. I mean, we did see pretty, not pretty. What was this? Big little lies. You know what, what happened there on pickup day. <laughs> Remember yeah. when they went to pick up the kids, there was some little drama there, but, but I just felt like this story, there was just so many outrageous things and, I got tired of keeping track of Josh's wives, girlfriends, and infidelities. You know, I just mm-hmm. got tired. It was just one little story after another. Here comes something else. And I was like, okay, so who the hell is this damn Rachel? She's the new girlfriend, but she's got a, a motive because, you know, and then they're sneaking into each other's houses. And I'm just, it, it was. And I think that may have been the thing that really made me not like this book as much as I liked Pretty Little Wife. It was just, you know, the, just the, you know, trying to keep score of this and that people coming into your house and, you know, she, she snuck in the house to kind of check on him. Uh, to look for something there in her house. And I'm just like, Mm-mm, this is, <laughs> she was who walking does in this? his house just like they were walking in her house. Yeah. And, and she then she was runs mad that they was walking in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I went over there to do something and she's lying to her husband. He's, it, it was, it was just, I don't know. I felt like the story was rushed. I felt like, mm, I don't know how. I mean, I can get the and concept. It's weird the start rushed with over four hundred pages of content. yeah, it was a lot, right? And it nothing was interesting. You mm. know, it was it was like a constant cycle of okay. I, I just got a, a little thought in my head. There was just too much going on between sister in law and brother in law to me. The dynamic of that, you know. It, you you're lying to me about his past wives and I'm you know and I get it you know you're a family now but it was just too much involvement in the brother-in-law's I can't relate at all because I just can't imagine being that close to my brother-in-law yeah but he I mean I mean it's one thing to be cool you see each other but dang I mean you act like you are personally offended. offended Yes, you did not know every little thing about his past before you arrived. Yeah, and that's right. I didn't know about this. I didn't know about that. And I'm and and I kind of I was like I was trying to feel for the character because her girlfriend is missing. So now you know all these things that happened in his past. You know they play a key part because if other people are missing, maybe that's why Abby is missing. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I just felt like she was just way too involved with this man. And, and when I thought of like the replacement wife, I'm a real stickler with titles. And I'm like, yeah. okay, so granted his wives were, you know, he had wives and they died and Rachel wind up being the replacement wife, but Alyssa or Lisa is the main character. So I was just like, I don't know, that kind of irked me with, because because I'm in my mind, I'm like, okay, so who's the fucking replacement wife? Was her friend the replacement wife? And now Rachel is the replacement wife? I feel like when you're right. When you hear that title, you think it's going to be about the main, the character. main character. Is, am I the replacement wife? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's where, and it got to the point where when they got to bath, um, because they were becoming a heated um, arguments as if they were a couple, Josh and Alyssa, Alisa. And that's it got like to she's the- too involved. Like that's her man. Yes. I was like, back the fuck up. I think I did say that at one time. Yeah. Like, get, 
you know, get out of his house. I mean, oh, I was going to go over there and clean up before the, the mm-hmm. maids came. No way. Get out no. of here. But that's, I mean, <laughs> that's what really got me is the title of the book, because that is something that I really love doing as a reader, like finding or figuring out why they picked this title or if that title will show up in the book. And I think she did mention the replacement wife is so-and-so the replacement wife, but it did not, this title, it didn't hit, it didn't hit with this, with this story. You know how I like, sometimes I like to do this with books, but let's do an imaginary rewrite, shall we? Sure. <laughs> Cause you know, how I like to say how this would have been a better story. I've done it lots of times. So mm. what if Elisa thought that she was a replacement wife and her husband had a past of dead wives of which some she didn't know about. And then she found out maybe her brother was her brother-in-law was killing them or, you know what I mean? So that way it could have been like, it looked like her husband was a killer, but it was actually her brother -brother (laughs) brother-in-law. Right. Trying to replace. Yes. And that, and that's why I was kind of like trying to, and, and I know my mind gets ahead of me sometimes when I'm reading, but that's what I was trying to figure like, okay, so the replacement wife, but Elisa is the main character. And that's why I thought is her husband involved with this, mm-hmm. you know, like, cause you know, her, it seemed like every time something happened, the brother knew, but kept the secret. Yeah. You know, so I was like, hmm. but not because he, in this case, not because he was in on it, just because he was obnoxiously protective of his yes. brother. To yes, a fault. exactly. But yeah, so I was just thinking, like, okay, so if you keep digging, are you going to get replaced? Because now you know too much. Those were some of my thoughts, and I, and again, that would probably would have been a better story yes. if you're going to use replacement wife. It should be the main character, not a secondary character. I mean, granted, she was the killer, but she was not the main character. Yeah. So, yeah. So, again, that's another thing that I did not like. And this story reminded me a lot of, um, and you brought this up to me when we read The Good Marriage, which is a book we loved by Kimberly mm-hmm. McCrate. The staircase. Yes, yes, I thought so too. <laughs> I'm like, gosh, this story reminds I'm me. Like, of something. did he kill her? Did he not kill her? Who said? She said. He said. She slipped like, down these stairs, and she slipped on her own blood. They never go up. <laughs> I'm like, oh lord, the back stairs she never uses. <laughs> I was like, okay, so oh, I guess God. this this trope in this storyline is used often. And the funny thing with the good marriage. And Kimberly McCrate, this narrator narrated the good marriage. Yeah, I saw that. Like, oh, <laughs> recognized her name. I wanted to see. I'm like, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, how ironic. She she narrates the same book that kind of has that same little undertone from the staircase. Yeah. But yeah, those were just some of my little the little nuances about this book. It was just you know repetitive. Um, and which, you, you know, that probably why I kind of like zoned out and I pushed my way through. It was, you know, t- because it's our book. But um, and I kind of did want to find out, did Josh really do it? But I wasn't eager. I wasn't like, you know, like, oh, who did it? Who did it? I'm just like, come on, just tell me. I found that um, I want to say around 50 percent. I was just in the groove, right? I was in the groove of the story. I kept going. It was a fast finish. I think I actually listened at 1.75. I sped it up to 1.75. And I was just on this cadence and I just wanted to blast through it. I wasn't, after the 50% mark, I wasn't bored with it. I was more irritated than anything. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that it wasn't boring because I did want to find out who did it, but it did become repetitive and I did become irritated with Alyssa, Alisa, you know, like she was, you know, following the girl to the hotel, um, avoiding the the investigators. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, she was an annoying character. And if that was something that Darby wanted um, she achieved it. If that's what she wanted, um, Alyssa to be, she achieved that. 
Congratulations. She annoyed the hell out of me. I do want to ask you what you think of that ending because um at you know, spoiler alert, the end reveals that Rachel is actually the younger sister of his first wife, who he actually murdered. He knocked her upside the head against a tree and she wasn't dead yet. So he drowned her in a lake. And that caused the woman's, you know, the wife's mother to spin out of control and have extreme grief. And like Rachel, I forgot what her actual real name was, never got the the stepmother she thought she deserved. She never got the stepsisters or the happy family she thought she deserved. So she had a lot of anger about that. So she came after Josh for ruining her family and taking her family from her. So what did she do? She took his family from him. That was how it ended. And the family, right. And the family she's talking about is because we never found out what happened to Elisa's friend until the end. And I, I felt the whole time she was alive. I just did. Um, Her friend was in hiding because Rachel was this woman who was writing to her as an unknown person named Concerned, who was. I did like that, though. I did did like that name. Just that name. I was like, Rachel, clever. Yeah, it is clever. (laughs) And uh, Rachel actually reveals herself to Elise. She's like, I'm concerned right before she walks and gets way to get married. She's like, are you? She's like, why are you concerned? Oh. oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I right. like that. That's probably the only thing I was like, oh, I like that. I like, I like right. that. And so she basically has Rachel's best friend thinking that she's rescued her from a murderer, which she could have. Yeah. We don't know if she would have murdered her or not. Because what's different is that Rachel's best friend was pregnant. Mm. So she fled and hid with Rachel's help. And so that's why Rachel at the end says, I stole his family. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, fair exchange is no robbery, I guess. Yeah, but so. I'm like, really? That's where you You don't know if he would have killed her or not, but I guess. Yeah. Better safe than sorry. So what's. Well, he killed one that we know of. They never talked about Candace, they never figured. They but, never confirmed if he no. killed Candace, right. but he absolutely killed at least one of his wives. And he had several girlfriends that are alive and walking around. Yeah. But the second wife did die in a, in a pool manner. Yeah. Because, um, oh, the nosy neighbor said they were watching them in the pool and they were having a good time. And then all of a sudden they heard a scream and, you know. Yeah, so, so it they made saw. it seem like it was an accident. Like she yeah. just, but we don't know for sure. No. So like the staircase, I, the woman's like, walk away from the pool, walk up the stairs. Oops. Yeah. While he went somewhere on his, yeah. he went to go do something. And in that little moment, she slipped. Yeah. So I have another ending or another, or an alternative ending, which I, which I thought was a possibility of who Rachel was Mm -hmm. because Candace was a biracial woman with Mm -hmm. money. I possibly thought Rachel was a sister who was disowned by the family because, you know, she didn't follow the rules, but she was white presenting and he couldn't. I was like, that would have been so much better because for her to get revenge, you know, she's a sister, a blood sister. Yeah, and not that to say that more sense. Yeah, this um Nina, who is it uh Rachel's real name was Nina, was a stepsister who never even knew Lauren. She never she was met dead. her. She died never before. met her. She, she died before mm-hmm. um her her dad married Lauren's mother. And I kind of thought, because I was like, maybe she's a, a relative of one of the dead or missing. Uh, women or the, the the you know the dead wives and that's what I thought that because she was more white presenting or passing he didn't recognize that she was Candace's sister that would have been a better tale and of revenge yeah. anyway 
But that I was mean, one of my since we know he tried to he tried it. He tried to come for Candace's money. Mm-hmm. And her trust her family tr- trust. trust. They were like, no, bitch. Nope. No. You had his house. You had and his that's shit. it. You and that is bitch, but you ain't getting that money. But you that's what that I money. And I was like, God, she there were so many other opportunities for this story to be done in a better manner. But you know, yeah. um, I would have loved that. That and I was like, I wonder maybe because she just didn't know how to do that, you know, maybe it was too sensitive with the race thing. But you threw in there that she was a biracial woman. Yeah. This okay, so here's okay, another another nuance. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this with another book, and I can't remember which one it was. Was it Long Bright River or Long Whatever River? When you want to throw in these black characters, dear white writers, when you want to throw in these black characters, mm-hmm. don't just throw them in there to tick off a box. Yeah. Use them properly. Mm-hmm. You use this woman. She's a biracial, blah blah blah. Come on, let's let's play. Let's let's do this. Don't just yeah. throw her in there. Just to, oh look, I have a look. I have some melanin over diversity. Here, y'all. Just a little bit. Check diversity. Check. No, go there. Do your damn homework. Ask some yeah. people. You know, get some darn good beta readers. Hello. I mean, Shelf addiction. if you had asked Buddy us reads. to read, this book would have been better. I mean, no hate. We loved your first book, Darby Kane. Yes, we did. And this would have been but, so much better. Yes. Right. Because I mean, the yeah. So yes, dear white writers, if you're going to throw in a black character, use that damn character properly. Don't just use her as the one little character. You know, like in the movies yeah. where the first time the first person that dies is the black character, or you know, she's just a shadow, or you just mention her constantly. No, Candace yes. was a key, f- you know, especially with if Josh was Josh was a murderer. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. your character, the character you chose to kill Josh or try to get revenge on Josh was a stepsister who didn't even know it her could stepsister have been so much more impactful yes. and i mean this this woman she seemed highly intelligent highly um like she was very she was a good actress but at the end there she lost it like a like a oh she was manic she, yeah I'm like, what is this bitch like the Joker? I mean, she like cackling and all kind of crazy stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. What happened to the control that this character Ew. was showing? Like she had stopped her meds. Yeah, she <laughs> got off those meds. Like everything she was using to drive her act had fell away at the end. And she was just like this raving maniac mm-hmm. right at the end. And I'm like, that don't even make sense. No, no. So yeah, so... You know, I'm just saying, if you guys need somebody to look at your books and make sure they're checking off the, the marks for your characters. Yes. We're here. And, you know, this is a um, Darby Kane is writing under a pseudonym. This is a pseudonym. Mm-hmm. And she is an experienced, you know, romantic suspense author. But this is only her second book under this name in this genre. Yeah. And I feel like her editors were too loose. They were too yeah. loose with it. Pretty Little Wife was such a success. They were too hands off with this one. Yeah. They should have yeah. treated it with kid gloves so that she didn't have a sophomore slump. Yeah. Cause this definitely was a slump. It was, you know, I tried, I tried, I was like, okay. I, you know, I started making my little notes. I was like, okay, family dynamics. I get it. The two brothers tight and the wife, this is her thing. Okay. But what can you do with that? I will, you guys, I would love to hear from someone that is this close to their brother-in-law that you would feel very angry about not knowing about his past before you even knew them hit the family or that you felt entitled to just walk up in his house and clean up for him and do his la- get his laundry together. I, I don't want to do his de- my damn husband's laundry. Right. Yes. 
I I don't do my husband's laundry. I'll be damned if I do my brother's in law laundry. No, uh, laundry. This is my thing. One man is enough. I cannot. I cannot understand. Take care of two grown men. That kind of relationship with a a, a brother in law. I mean, I, like you know, my brother in law got rested, so we were close. I knew my brother in law before I knew my husband. We joked around and we played, but like that. Mm-mm. Hey, yeah. how you doing? Oh, you know, or you he introduced me to a new girlfriend. Hey. That was it. <laughs> and that just scene, so you know, it it was just here's my thing. Just make <laughs> sure I know some names and I don't slip up. You know, if you bring in another one. Oh <laughs> but my here that I, I didn't call somebody the wrong name. That scene, you guys, there was a scene where Rachel and Josh ran off and got married in Vegas and Elisa and um, Harris were told by phone. And then that evening, I guess they had to break the news to the child. I don't know why they act like this child is 12. He's like four or five. He's like a kid. Yeah. And they were all quiet and like upset. I guess he was outraged that he did not get to go to his brother's third wedding. And she's upset that the woman got married. That whole scene could have been thrown out. Did nobody right. care about that? Get out their it business. Was dumb. Another yeah. point of argument for them, just for them to yeah. argue. Yeah, because you didn't get invited to, you know, their come on now. Oh, it's wait. Not and not just you. that. <laughs> and not just that. The husband was mad. He blamed Alyssa, Alisa. For not get for them not getting invited because she was constantly on Josh's right. tail and blaming right. him. So right. you're the reason why we didn't go. Well, I'd have been like mother. Yeah, it was another point of contention between them. And what for what? Yeah, for what? It's a damn wedding. We they probably already won't... know you choose your brother over your wife. Something wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you could have told him with a little more excitement. Him, we're talking about the little boy, about her, his uncle's wedding. That little boy cared. All that boy cared about was them donuts. He didn't Look. care about a wedding. <laughs> no, he all he care. wanted he was just, some sugar like, and something to beat on. Do- half, can I eat another half donut? That's all he cared. That's all he and cared then the, about. <laughs> and then the scene about a wedding. where it seemed like the um that it seemed like uh, Harris was trying to get a little something something, and. Uh, <laughs> Alisa was like, no, nah, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I would have been that. I would have been that woman. I'm like, why don't you go ask your brother? <laughs> I'm thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> see what like, Josh has for you. So much. <laughs> see, what, see what Josh can do for you. Because uh, uh, these pearly gates oh are closed. Right. Right. I'm Mm-mm. like, oh my God. Ah, no, sir. I can't. I can't. And then I make sure I walked around there bending over, shaking. I found something skimpy to wear just because. Thank you. Hmm. B- Keep playing games it- with me. I'm like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, good night. <laughs> Drop stuff. I in must front have of- took the wrong drugs today. <laughs> <laughs> Too many drugs. I got to go to bed. Uh, right. It's like two can play at this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I'll make you sorry. That's what you want to do. Okay. Right. Get the (laughs) hell out of here. I've just lost all desire for you. You just, no. (sighs) Desert. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Scorched earth. I read Will Smith's book that I love saying that part. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're not getting shit. Are you kidding me? Right. Like, get out of here. Uh, All right, y'all. Let's, let's write this thing. Let's write it. So before we rate it, I do want to say we did check the ratings for this when we first got the book. And of course, it's that traditional thing that always happens. Everyone loves the first book. So everyone rates it before they even read it. Early reviewers rate it high because they just do. But now that the book has been available for a few weeks, that rating is slipping on Goodreads. It's Mm. slipping down. It's trending down. Yeah. And I see why. Hmm. I see why. Now that the regular folks got their hands on it. Right. Not the net galley people who give all these rave reviews. Yes. But the regular readers who pay for the books, 
<laughs> and runs the books. They you know what? On it. You know what? It's something mm-hmm. about when you got to spend them coins, ain't it? <laughs> want to get a good review? Want, want an honest review? You Pay twenty seven dollars. Pay twenty seven ninety nine. Girl, right. Nothing will choke out an honest review, but spend 28 bucks on a book. You'll be like, ah, I, I can't it. get this money back. <laughs> That's where the honest review comes out. Spend some money, the truth comes out. <laughs> so, dear reader, do not look at the reviews from the net galley people. Not all of them are going to give you honest. an honest review. Right. Or you they give it an extra zhuzh because it's net gal. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yes. They, they hope put to a get a sprinkle on top, like, you know. <laughs> like the, the salt guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the little salt guy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so God. yeah, it is trending down. And this is the funny thing. It I'll go back to that too. But I have, you know what? I think what we should do next time, like for our next book. And and in, in, in consecutive books after that, let's write down the starting rating when we pick the book. So, you know, our book for next month, let's look at that and write it down somewhere and bring it up. But I had mentioned to Tamara when I started, you know, the when I got on today for our recording, I was like, wow, because I finished the book and I went to upgrade my progress. That probably was at three or two. Mm. It was 3.71. Mm. As we speak, guys, what is it? Tell us. 3.69. Oh, uh, and I mean, I do not yes. mean to be mean. I'm just saying it's funny how mm-hmm. you guys got to watch these ratings when it's brand spanking new. Things are rated high because people go off of the strength of the last book and they haven't read it yet or they're motivated to give a positive review for some reason. Usually, a relationship that they have or yes, a partnership a right yeah Mm-mm. yeah yeah and that's I've, just the truth yeah so yes at three o'clock central standard time the rating was 371 and currently whatever time it is this is recorded it's 3.69 mm. Yeah. I'm curious to see what it will be by the time we upload this episode at the end of the month. Okay, I'll stop. It might be lower. <laughs> oh, it is I after mean, I get finished. Then oh, you get yeah. finished. Oh, yeah, we're going to drop. Yeah, it's going to drop even lower. And I mean, I I, and so not bad. to say I did because I hate I hate when that happens because I hope the best, right? I hope for the best. Yeah. I go into it with high expectations because I loved the previous thing so much. So it's always a fall from grace, right? It's like, oh man. Well, and not just that, we were so eager, like oh, Darby Kane. We're gonna read her first. Because we are we were looking for a banger <laughs> mm-hmm. for January, you know, like, oh, first recording of the year, Darby Kane. And like you said, we're hopeful. We don't who wants a, a sophomore slump? You know what? Straight up. This book might have been awesome from Rachel's point of view. She's playing two characters. She changed aside. side. She a villain. Yeah, because you know what? She only had one chapter and was it even a full chapter? It's probably no. a little soliloquy. Yeah. Because I was like, who the hell? And then it hit me. Oh, it's Rachel. Yeah. yeah. You're but right. But she told this story like, oh, this bitch is stupid. I'm getting her. I'm getting him. I'm getting everybody. That could have been a great read. Yeah, that could have. Gosh, we just did three damn books with alternate storylines. <laughs> oh, oh God. We should be editors. Okay, yeah, I better stop. Everybody should, should always editors. say, I should be this. We look. You know, mm. I hope nobody hates us for being real, but I can't be any other way. I just can't do it. So no. sorry, not sorry. No. Yeah. And when we love it, y'all know all whatever month we read her first book, we praised this book almost every other month last year. We came back talking about we always referenced Pretty Little Wife over yeah. and over again. That mm-hmm. was like the gold standard last year that we were stacking oh, things against it. Yes. So we do go hard for stuff we really like. 
If so, I'm not mistaken, that might have was that like our only five star book. Mm-hmm. I think that was our only five star mm-hmm. book for 2021. Yeah, and we read 12 books. We read yeah. a book a month in Pretty Little Wife. I can't remember what the month it was, but it was our only five star book for the year. Yeah, and it was yeah. So, so yeah, you can't say we don't go hard for the good stuff, but when it's not good, we got to tell you. Yeah, very. So, all righty. So I guess you mean, I guess you want to rate this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> let's do you this go first. <laughs> yes. Okay. It was okay. I gave it a two. Okay. Well I thought said. three, but you know, the more I started talking, I was like, because mm. three, I mean, three is, I won't recommend, but three was like, eh. let's see. Cause good ratings. If you give it a three, you said, I liked it. And I didn't yeah. like it. Three is, I feel like, not hot or cold. It was fine. Yeah. To yeah. me. I liked it. It was fine. Yeah. And this I did not like. So I yeah. I gave it a two. And I am right there with you. When I first closed the book, and that's why I never write it right, uh, rate it right away. I wait. Yeah. Um, when I first closed the book, I'm like, uh, something didn't sit right. Yeah. I was like, well... I guess I could rate it a three, but then I kind of thought about it and I'm like, well, (laughs) I just Just can't. And the more we talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I can't full well say I feel neutral about something I have sat here and complained for 55 minutes about. I cannot do it. That is like, what? Contradictory. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) <laughs> so I have to give it a two as well. Yeah. It, it, I mean, you have to. And I have faith. I want to give her one more chance. Whatever her next book is, I'm going to read it because maybe she learned something from the replacement wife. Maybe yeah. she did. I'm going to give her yeah. one more go because I love, we love that first book so much. I'm not willing to give up quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think I, I mean, there were some problematic areas, but it wasn't enough for me not to want to give her, a, a, yeah. you know, at least a, a third try. Yep. Third time's a charm, right? Yep. Let's hope. Cross hey, the fingers. We've, we've, we've given other folks that so we will give you another try, Darby. And it wasn't I mean, that horrible. It was just this. It was just something yeah. about this one. It just did not. It was such a long jump from reality like you had to really suspend disbelief here a lot like this woman Elisa was so stuck on stupid and weak I'm like no yeah you you hit the nail on the head is that the right term yes Mm -hmm. that's the right term yeah you did it was it was very far off from reality um regardless of meds or not and I think the meds she was taking weren't the ones to have her, you know, her, her reality altered. They should have been calming think, her down. Yes. Which kind of made it hard for me to understand. Like, so that's all you ratcheted up like that. That's all you. Cause it's not the medication. That's not no. how that medication works. Works. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, y'all. So that's it for this. Uh, book. Now we have to. We to do narrator. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. What did you think about the narrator? <laughs> um, she had some areas where I, I struggled with her with the names. Um, you know, Alyssa, Lisa, Harris, yeah. Harrison. But mm-hmm. other than that, she was she was she was pretty good. I mean, she did the male voices great. She did. You know, I didn't know the the difference, like when Rachel, you know, the different character voices. So she did good. But, you know, a couple little things that that, um, bugged me. But other than that, she was pretty good. Yeah, I would agree with you. The names was a thing. It was a thing. Um, But I enjoyed her narration overall. I think her, you know, like I said, I listened at 1.75. So her natural cadence in this story was a little slow for me. Mm-hmm. So I needed to speed it up. Uh, usually I listen at 1.5. That's my average listening speed for most things. Okay. But I went a little faster on this, sure, one this for one. me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, no issues. I think uh, she did what she could. 
she did make some errors, but I don't know whose fault that is. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Yeah. Got to pick right names and the way you do things, yeah. but that's that's just my or, point of view. I mean, or even an editor, you know, or the producer of yeah, this that too. audio book could have been like, dude, you're saying the wrong name. Record this name and let me drop the right names in. I mean, he could have, they could have done something. Yeah, they could have listened. To fix it. That's true. So, so it makes you know. wonder. Yeah. Makes well, you, you know, sometimes these publishers, they get too comfortable with the author and they think it's a sure thing. And so they just let shit go off the rails. Like, um, I mean, to be honest, like I can name one huge author, Sarah J. Mass. I love like some of the stuff she's done and I don't like some of the stuff she's done. But mm-hmm. she's such a big author that people are on auto buy. You know, I mean, they just mm-hmm. buy her stuff regardless. They got real loosey goosey with some stuff. Like same with J.R. Ward. Like she's got a long running fan base. People are on auto buy. I mean, are you phoning yeah. it in? At, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, they just don't feel the need to, you know, to c- treat these books with kid gloves. They just kind of push them through because they think people will buy them no matter what. Right. Regard. So, yeah. Yeah. Like we don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Same with audiobook editing. So sounds like it Uh, yeah all right so up next we are reading razor blade tears by s.a cosby so this is another author we're returning to from last year i'm not gonna lie i'm a little nervous nervous. (laughs) right i Um, agree i would be too uh, and i feel like i'm gonna have to get into the vibe to read this because I feel like his his style isn't my normal thing okay but I did enjoy the last book you know we had that discussion y'all can go back and look at it or listen to it I did enjoy it but he's not my normal cup of tea I think his writing style his vibe isn't my normal cup of tea it still has a really good rating right now but the amount of ratings are much lower than his first book Mm. so um wow you know what is like the, what is thousand so what's the rating for razor blade tears 20 oh 4.17 4.17 is so razor it's blade. really good um actually it has more ratings than his first book i thought okay. it had less it has more so okay. maybe it's good i mean i'm gonna be hopeful not be scary because his first book I rated four out of five. Right. But I understand. I mean, we just dealt with a sophomore slump. We dealt with a few yeah. others. So yeah. So I mean, we are a little gun shy when it comes to that. So I know. So 4.17. I just wrote it down. <laughs> we yeah. will see. Um what is today? Okay. And the oh. book came out, it's been out since July. So it's been out. Oh, over okay. six months. Okay. So, okay. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty settled in, I think. Yeah. Six months is a while. Yeah. It's those two to three, I would say even two months after being released is the, the scary stuff. Yeah. If I should, if I should, could say scary, but yeah. Okay. But I got, I just know I got to get in my mind for some like, no shade, but male writing is different. <laughs> right. Yeah. And he's a um, country. Yes. Country, boy. Yes. Yeah. From Virginia. And his style is a little different. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand where you're where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's it for today. Um, please pick up the second, you know, the next book that we're reading. You can find us on book clubs or over on Facebook under Shelf Addiction Official. You can join us and talk about the books there. Pick up the Shelf Addiction bingo card for the first three months of this year. You can be entered to win $25 to your favorite bookstore. Mm -hmm. And you can get cool things um, checked off by doing things like reading along with us and sharing a pick. 
or joining us for a book club meeting you can get a little check off of your your bingo card doing that so yeah so join us join us the bingo card is available on shelfaddiction.com forward slash bingo the link is also in the show notes so we're done for today anything else classy no uh, that is it all right guys until next time happy reading take care bye-bye If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.